Smaki, the mm -hmm. president last night canceled a crucial trip to Mozambique. And I guess uh, a question that many South Africans are asking this morning is whether Tata's health has gotten worse. Um, as I say, I'm not going to communicate, I'm not going to respond in detail about Tata's health because, as I say, it's the president and the presidency that communicates about Tata's health. We as a family cannot communicate in detail because his medical team commits directly with the president. But safe to say, yes, that the situation is critical. Yes. When last did you see him? Uh, yesterday, I was there, I think, from 3 to 6. And how did he look? He doesn't look good for you. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Um, uh, but I think that for us, as his children and grandchildren, we still have this hope because you know, when we talk to him, he will flutter trying to open his eyes and will open his eyes. Um, when you touch him, he still responds. And I think for us, as his progeny, as long as Tata is still responding, when we talk to him, when we touch him, I think that gives us hope. Now, you have called it a media frenzy. Other people have called the journalists parking outside the hospital vultures. How do you as a family um, see um, the media that's parking outside the hospital? Is it something that troubles you as a family? Yes, I think we are, I have said in a number of interviews that I've made, and I've been very strong, much more strong, I have said it's very crass. Um, the fact that my dad is a global icon, one of the 25 influential people of the 21st century, does not mean that people cannot respect the privacy and dignity of my dad. And, you know, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. There's sort of a racist element with many of the foreign media where they just cross boundaries. You have no idea what's happening at the hospital. You know, in the middle of Park Street, they have actually, they are standing right there in the aisle. You can't even enter hospital or you can't even go out of the hospital because they are making themselves such a nuisance. It's like truly vultures waiting when a lion has devoured the buffalo, waiting there to, you know, for the last carcasses. That's the image that we have as a family. Um, and we don't mind the interest. But I just think it has gone overboard. You know, um, the other day I was in Kunu. They were at the airport. They were at the entrance. They were at the top. They violate all boundaries. I don't know how much you talk to them. They don't want to listen. And I think at this point in time, as a family, as an African, I know at this time you have to be in peace. You have to have a sense of decorum. This is what is required. And I don't know how people come here and just violate everything in the book. When Margaret Thatcher was sick in hospital, I didn't see this kind of media frenzy around Margaret Thatcher, where people cross boundaries. Even if they are engaged to say, this is how you behave, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, is it because we are an African country that people just feel they can't respect any laws of this country, they can violate everything in the book? I, I just think it's, it's in bad taste, it's crass. And, and to the argument that um, people genuinely want to know um, how he's progressing, how he's doing, um, is there a way perhaps that you think this can be done without... No, um, I think the, the type of interest that people want to talk about every little detail, the type of reporting that CBS has done, actually, uh, if the president has said, my dad is critical but serious, you know, it's stable but serious or critical. Why do they want to know the nature on a day-to-day -day basis of what's happening? Tata deserves his privacy and dignity, and this family deserves it. 
And um, if, if people think, say they really care about Nelson Mandela, then they should respect that. Then they should respect that there is a part of him that has to be respected. It doesn't mean that everything of his has to be out there in the public. I don't think so. I don't agree with it. If, if, you, were, if you were to tell um, us how best we can um, respect his dignity but still be able to convey to South Africans and to the world um, how he's doing, how do you think we should, we should, be, we should be doing it? Respect what the president is offering. I mean, there is no government. The UK government was not communicating on a daily basis about Margaret Thatcher and giving the gory details of Margaret Thatcher's sickness while he was in hospital to say today, you know, I, he's in life support today. This is, you know, this is the type of procedure that's happened. They didn't report in that manner. When uh, uh, Roland Reagan was sick, they never reported in that. I have never seen it in the history of the West where they communicate on a daily basis and communicate the details of what's happening to their presidents. I've never seen that. Why, why, why is it expected of an, of an African government to be able to do that about its own president or its own icon? Why should they do that? Now, I want to move on, if I may. Madiba is due to turn 95 in a few weeks' time. Mm -hmm. As a family, how would you like to see South Africa and the world commemorating his 95th birthday. No magic in the numbers, perhaps, but 95 sounds like that number, you know, golden number, if you like, that uh, people would like to do so many things um, to commemorate his life and legacy. If uh, we are blessed by the good Lord to have Tata still alive and breathing on July 18. I think uh, as a family, we will celebrate as we usually do, and, and that is to have uh, a lunch or dinner and honor him. Uh, usually, you know, um, most of the children will do, go and do their 67 minutes in the morning, and uh, during midday or early afternoon, we will get around and have, you know, our, our meal to celebrate. If his daughter is in hospital, we might do something in the hospital, you know, um, as we've done in the past. You know, Zeni has been very good to organize lunches at the hospital, you know, uh, on, on weekends for us, so that at least we are close to Dada in spirit. So nothing extraordinary or special, given that it's the 95 year? Um. No, nothing extraordinary or special this year because of uh, the situation that we are in. If, we, if the situation was different, uh, there, there would be a big celebration, you know. In actual fact, the grandchildren, um, Kweku and Daba, had planned uh, that on the 19th there was going to be a, a gala dinner, but they've since uh, um, postponed it to a, a later date, you know, the celebratory dinner because of the situation we are in. Now, you were quoted as, having, as being the person who uh, organized a family meeting that was held um, two days ago. Was that mm -hmm. part of that plan, or was it about something else? It was something else of a private nature, and we, I'm not going to talk about it because it's a Mandela issue. It's not a public issue. Well, I guess uh, what made a lot of people a lot more curious mm -hmm. was perhaps your visit to the graveyard. I didn't visit. Did they see me at the graveyard? Well, that's what some of the reports said. No, even if there's a visit at the graveyard, graveyards, family graveyards are sacrosanct. They are a sacred place. They are not for public. They are for public once when you bury a loved one and you invite people to that, and that's the end. After that, it becomes strictly a family sacred place. So uh, it's our sacred place. I, I don't care how many reporters there, it's nobody's business what we were there to do. I want us to talk a bit about the family and Madiba's legacy. Mm -hmm. Now, with the recent occurrences where we read in the papers, we saw on television um, that reports about the family squabbling over Madiba's inheritance. 
And a lot of people then started asking whether, if and when it happens, Madiba one day leaves us. Um, the fear among certain people is that his legacy may just um, be affected by some of the squabbles, or at the very least reports of squabbles that we've seen and heard. Rio, can I correct you? First, I must say, I'm going to lump you together as the media. You are very lazy people, okay? You don't actually do your own research or investigation. The court case is not a family squabble, okay? It is simple. An application to the court to remove certain people as directors. That's it. It has nothing. There's no family member fighting another family member. That's a simple thing. People must go and take court records are public thing, documents. They must go to the court, take the records, read them, and find out exactly what they, it has nothing it's not a, about the squabble, about the family feud, about the legacy, or, Man, or Nelson Mandela's inheritance, or as the star said, was starting to pull, you know, uh, killing Mandela for, 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 it has nothing to do with it. And the issue, that trust was created by Ismail Ayob on behalf of the family. It's a maintenance trust, okay, for the welfare of Tata himself, his current spouse, his ex-spouse, and his children and grandchildren, simply. And maintenance in that trust, Vuyo, is defined widely. It can be for buying houses, for going on holidays, for education. So people must go to the court and read the court records and not cry and create a frenzy that is not there. And as a family, you are, you are unanimous in oh, this. Very, You've very taken a common position. We have taken a common position except one member of this family who signed a document and then denied that he had signed it. Now, the ANC, the home of Madiba, um, has taken issue with some of the political parties about how they, in the ANC's view, are misappropriating the legacy of Madiba. What is your view as a family? Who's misappropriating? The ANC is misappropriating the legacy of Madiba? No, the ANC has taken issue with parties like the DA, okay. um, with parties like Akhang, to say Madiba cannot be divorced from the ANC. I think the ANC is right. I mean, what is it that we, we don't hear and we don't understand? Tata, out of his own mouth, has said, I am a loyal and dedicated member of the African National Congress. Even when I die and go to heaven, the first thing that I will look for is the African National Congress. So, in a sense, he is a ward of the African National Congress. Data has not said, you know, when I go to heaven, I will wonder and look at, is there any other party that I join? He said very clearly, I will look for the ANC, African National Congress, and join it. So people must not try and misappropriate and misinterpret Nelson Mandela for their own sake. He's very clear. Now, in, in, during the days that when he could still speak for himself, mm -hmm. um, um, in, the, in his discussions with you about the ANC? What were the sort of things that, that he would say? Well, Tata um, is, is, is very, very loyal to the ANC, you know. Um, he, it is a party that he entered and believed in his value to free the African people. Um, he has high regard for the leaders of the ANC. Dada has always maintained in his life that he was not alone in the struggle. He always talks about a glorious we, not an I, and realizes that without the efforts of the men and the women who sacrificed a lot in their life, today we would not be free at all. Now, some of his comrades, who, those who are still alive, mm -hmm. Andrew Mlangeni, Ahmed Kathrada, have you spoken to them lately? No, I haven't spoken to them lately. No. So you wouldn't know how they feel about his state of health at the moment? Well, I would assume uh, that like everybody else, I mean, yeah, 
Dr. Mlangi, uh, you know, unfortunately now I know that uh, he's in hospital and I wish him all the best. But I think all of them are very prained and traumatized about uh, the incident. Um, I mean, Tata has been sick for a long time. You know, he's been in and out of hospital from since 2011, especially from since December last year. So um, it is not a, a very good thing to see your loved one suffer. Um, and I assume that they are in terrible pain.